day 44. And this is why I hate hostels. So we got breakfast at Boogie's Diner, which the people at the hostel did not want to recommend to us. Presumably because of the dumb name, but who knows why. It sounded like there was more to it. Anyway, the breakfast was pretty good. They were open. I think at this point we've eaten, well, I've eaten at three of four restaurants in town. <laughs> Maybe five. So... Now we, uh, we got out of the hostel, snoring guy was awake and just laid there like a slug, just staring at his phone and staring at us. Oh my God. I had to get up and get out in the middle of the night just to get away from the racket because I really was considering smothering him in his sleep and I didn't hike all this way to catch a case. Rio Grande County Jail is like right across the street. Uh, so we vacated the the hostel and I did text the um, owner to let her know, you know, like, hey, we only got like two hours of sleep last night because this guy was so rude coming in, shining his headlight on us, rustling through all of his things like some kind of crazy mouse and then just like the horrific snoring all night long. So... Now we're a couple doors down, sitting in front of the Family Dollar, waiting for it to open. This place doesn't open until 9. What the hell, Family Dollar? I would have sworn they opened at like 7 or 8 in the morning, but we only have like 5 more minutes to wait. So we're making our way down the road, which is part of the alternate route to get out of town. We're going to hit the grocery store and the laundromat on the way. Since there's no outfitter here in town, I've have to wash my socks at least to get me to Salida, which is like at Monarch Pass, another almost 120 miles away. So leaving here with clean clothes, because it could be, you know, five, six days. We have no idea what the trail is like, the conditions are like when we reconnect uh, with the official CDT. But I imagine there will probably be some post tolling and there will probably definitely be a lot of mud. So getting my socks clean now so I have at least three out of four good socks to wear for the next five or six days is pretty important. And then we'll start making our way back into the hills and the free woods where we can camp wherever we want in some fucking peace. You know, in the meantime, we need to go stock up on gummy bears and other candy and all the other crap we eat while we're out. So, come on, Family Dollar, open. What do you do when you don't want to grind the stumps out of your yard? You put your satellite dish on it. You don't want to be messing up the side of your house after all. That's funny. So we're about ready to leave Del Norte, or Del Norte, as one local just called it, Del Norte Peak. But Del Norte seems like it's how it's supposed to be pronounced. And oh, I'm looking out the window right now, and it definitely looks like the weather's going to be shitty here pretty soon. We're at the laundromat. We just start our laundry here and pick up the last of the supplies we needed to make it to Salida. Um, at the store just around the corner and um, that's about it we're super tired because we didn't sleep last night so we're not trying to do huge miles going out of town today um, we'll just see how far we get we definitely would like to take a nap but if it's gonna start storming soon maybe we should just uh, go someplace where we can or even just stay here and let it blow over a little bit they're only supposed to last for a couple of hours this afternoon and we're only planning on doing like 15 to 20 miles out of town so we'll just see what happens it's been a reasonably uneventful but nice enough stay here a lot of friendly locals i mean a lot of people have just hit us up and started talking to us and everything people are interested about hikers this town is mostly for the people who are bicycling the great divide trail so uh but because of the high snow on the San Juans this year, a lot of hikers have been rolling through town. So it's been a fun stay. It's been a fun stay. I'm glad we, I'm glad we hung out for a little while. Well, leaving Del Norte has turned out to be harder than we expected because you probably can't hear the sound of thunder because of the highway we're walking next to. But 
yeah, we're basically just like surrounded by a shitload of thunderstorm activity, lightning, and clouds that look like they're dumping a considerable amount of rain and probably hail because it got really cold here for a minute. How oh, we're headed back to the laundromat, hiding out for another little minute. At some point today, hopefully we'll depart for like the next several miles, like 15 miles of trail. Trail is road walking and was in, um, pretty much entirely exposed and out in the open. So there's nowhere to hide. Yeah, it's definitely starting to rain again. And it is cold. Man, what a monsoon season in Colorado. But the weather forecast after today actually looks pretty good. So hopefully it's just an anomaly. It's a quarter after two. You <laughs> creepy weirdo. We're finally departing our secondary residence to save five laundromat and car wash. Oh my goodness. It's been, uh, we've been in there for hours. And the lady came in to clean and everything and she just kind of like walked around us and you know, she didn't care. So that was cool. Thanks, save five. You saved our asses. Uh, now we're going to see how far we can get, hopefully to Lagarita Creek, which is like 16 trail miles up, but we found some road walking shortcuts. It's all road walking anyway. So we found a few shortcuts to take to try and at least get to where we can camp by water tonight because we're only carrying like a couple liters out. So wish us luck and hope for no rain. Here at this place you can get your liquor and then rent yourself a U-Haul. What could possibly go wrong? Seems like a great idea. Crossing the Rio Grande. Wow. I think I've only ever seen the Rio Grande in New Mexico. But, hey, still brown. And really big. There's a lot of water. Holy crap. That is a ton of water. Getting off Colorado State Highway 112. Super sketchy road walk. Like next to no shoulder. The speed limit is 65 miles per hour. And yet there's still cow shit all over the side of the road. We are just incapable of escaping cow shit on this trail. Oh man, that was a busy road. I'm glad we're on this one now. It's gonna be a lot. Less busy, but we are walking towards that, so that kind of blows. Well, after a stressful ass three or so miles on the highway, getting blown into it, into oncoming traffic, we're on Grand Avenue or County Road 33, and it's already so much better. Birds are cheeping. The wind has calmed to just a mere chilly breeze. There's cool rocks out here. <sighs> Much, oh, pavement ends. What? Even better. Not too shabby. And it looks like the wind that was is chasing the storm away from where we're going. All good things. spot right now. They pretty much entirely surrounded by rainstorms right now or something. That one behind us is chasing us. But the wind's just a little bit. It drips on us a little bit. But I gotta say this is actually pretty perfect weather to be doing this walk because there is no place to go 
if it's shitty out here. Like too much sun or heat, you're just stuck. So this is actually kind of nice. Not too bad at all. All right, well, we've done a pretty awesome job of avoiding shitty weather by slowly plodding our way down this road. <sighs> Even the stuff behind is cleared up. Yay. <sighs> pretty much here all around. Beautiful views too. And we should be getting within about a half mile to where the divide trail comes back in and actually joins this road. Our creek, hopefully about two, two and a half miles, which would be awesome. Hopefully there's some good places to camp around there, but since it's off this road, uh, should be all right. As long as we can find some shrubs, get some cover under, the wind picks up, it's definitely a little chilly. But yeah, it's beautiful out here, a little bit, a little monotonous, a little boring, but now we're turning this corner like we haven't seen those mountains yet, so we'll get bored with them tomorrow. All right, well, we're officially back on the official alternate. I feel so much more official now. I am a little sad we missed a natural arch. If it was indeed on the route, those things are cool. But yeah, I don't feel any different. Might look a little older, I don't know. Yeah, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. That happens every day though, so I'm kinda used to it by now. Less than two miles of the water, that might be it. Over there, it runs stronger on this side of the road for whatever on the map than on that side. <sighs> Hopefully there's a cool place to camp or a decent place to camp with some cover from the wind. Ooh, look at those giant boulders. I didn't see those. This side of the road has been kind of boring, but it's starting to up its game a little bit now. Nice. We're almost to our water. These birds are flying around because we're walking through like clouds, oops, clouds of gnats right now. I'm totally gonna eat some, damn it. <sighs> More protein, but looky, looky. That looks cold. I'm already cold. We're only like barely over 8,000 feet down here and it feels colder than it did the other day coming down the mountain. Ooh, look at those big badasses over there. And it's funny, we were talking to a local at the laundromat this afternoon who said that he's never seen, you know, he's probably like early 70s, late 60s, and he said he's lived here all his life and has never seen the San Juans like this, this much snow, this much water in the rivers that the melt-off hasn't even started yet. Or like the runoff hasn't even started yet. Like, oh my gosh. What a year to pick to hike the CDT and be a dedicated to continuing a full northbound through. But, I mean, we're still at it. That's why we're doing the low route, but, man, I don't want to dick around with that. That looks like some full-on, like, K2 mountaineering shit I have no business with. I don't know how to use an ice axe. I don't know how to self-arrest. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. And these hokas, no. We can't afford to get all that mountaineering stuff. And not, in addition, that shit's expensive. You'll be dropping all this money on crampons, micro spikes, snowshoes, ice axes, whippets. And then you gotta carry that. Oh my God, my pack is already crazy heavy because we're carrying enough food to get to uh, Monarch Pass is like almost 120 miles from Del Norte so no thank you <sighs> I'll just hang out down here at least down here you know other than this first bit out of town where we had to carry a little bit extra water because we weren't sure if we were gonna hit this creek and also because there was really no water source so this is the first one this little splish across the road, which is probably why there's all the gnats and the frogs. Oh, oh it smells like there's fish in there too. Hmm. But, you know, carry one liter at a time. 
not have to worry about melting snow to get water or where it's falling through like a snow or ice bridge because they're melting, you know, to get found sometime later by someone and then ruin, definitely ruin their day. But hey, this water is on the map. It's not named, but it's a flowing. Huh, that's awesome. Our creek will definitely be flowing and find a nice little place to camp around there. <sighs> Try to not get my feet wet right at the end of the day. Mer, it's not looking good. Maybe right here. Just kind of skitter across it. Okay. Yeah, well, crap. I'm wet. Damn it! <sighs> not too bad though. And it's still early enough that I think they'll dry up before. Hopefully, you gross pond. Hopefully they'll dry up before morning. It's a beautiful day out here though. Damn, I love this. I know I bitch a lot, but I really do. I really love hiking. It's fucking awesome. Hey, well, I hear a creek. There's some creek. Hopefully there's a bridge. Is over another part of the creek because it's all fenced off. Private property, which sucks because we were in a camp around here. <sighs> Barbed wire everywhere. And it's freezing out here. Oh yeah, there's totally, that's uh, like big water. Plenty big enough. Just have to figure out how to get down to it now. Filter some water, I guess, and keep pressing on. Which sucks, because I was ready to stop walking and eat something and put on all my clothes. Mer, looks like I'll be jumping this fence and going down into the bushes instead. Huh, oh well. Hey, that looks like a good spot. I'll grab it from there. So while that nerd played video games on the bridge, I went down this steep, muddy bank with tick infested, I'm sure of it. I'm all paranoid about ticks now. A uh, bank to get water out of the creek since it's all barbed wire off everywhere here in Brodo's Orlandia. But we're gonna get water and filter, but mainly right now I'm very sad because my hoodie I've been wearing this whole time got a hole in the pocket and my phone keeps falling out. So hopefully I can get my other one sent to me in Salida because that is half the reason why I wear this shirt. So I don't have to strap my phone to my pack. And so it looks like I'm wearing like a, you know, half a tablet computer strapped to my, to my front. It's also not particularly comfortable for hiking, but oh my God, look at this out here. It's really beautiful in Saguache County, Colorado, <sighs> where it's cold down here, but it's worse up there. <laughs> Well, we were gonna maybe camp here in front of this kiosk since it's all like private land around here. It looks like all barbed wire off and shit. But uh, we might be heading towards some trees and we're pretty close to the water and the mosquitoes are definitely out. So we're gonna try our luck by heading up the road a little bit more. Hopefully we'll find something soon because it is definitely chilly out here. But at least the sun's finally out. Feels great. Hello. <sighs> that definitely helps a lot. Well, all right. We made it maybe a tenth of a mile away from the water. <laughs> maybe 0.15. But hey, look, we found a bush to hide behind because there's not shit for cover out here. And a lot of it seems like it's fenced off. So, yeah, we're going to camp here next to this awesome rock wall somebody built and across the street from some howling donkeys or cows or something and uh yeah call it a day oh my gosh this is beautiful out here though i just saw the a lenticular cloud it's not as lenticular now but ah, clouds beautiful i love them hello looks like a ufo all right so we've got our awesome campsite for the evening beautiful views of the mountain through this wire fence with a rock wall right next to the cattle guard so no one's sneaking up on us well at least from that direction 
They could be super sneaky from the other direction. And it has full LTE for both of us. Miracle. Oh my goodness. I have definitely slept in worse places. Definitely slept in better. But definitely slept in worse places than on the side of a road. And as roads go, this isn't that bad. It's been a while since we saw a brodozer go by. And we seem to have got maybe, knock on wood, far enough away from the mosquitoes that they haven't found us yet. Of course, once we start, you know, cooking and sweating in here with all the cooking, maybe they'll find us, but hopefully not. It's beautiful out here. Oh my goodness. It's been a really great day considering the fact we hid most of it in the laundromat. Turned out not too shabby. Anyway, I'm going to eat some salami cheese and tortillas out of my pack because those are the heaviest things I have. My pack is stupid right now. And then probably go to bed since we didn't get any sleep last night. That lady never texted me back or never responded to me after I told her about like the fireman that like just had sleep apnea type snoring all night long and we didn't sleep but maybe two hours until he arrived all rustling through his stuff and flashing his flashlight or headlight on us and everything and then snoring loudly and uncontrollably the entire night so we'll probably be knocking out early but I imagine that this view will be just as nice to wake up to as it is to go to sleep to. Good night.